Hello. Today is Friday, January 16th, 2009. I um, have some th thoughts I would like to transcribe for posterity. Uh, but I'm a terrible speaker. I'm, actually, I'm a writer. I, I'm not a famous writer. I'm not even a published writer. I publish one thing. But I Writing is my uh, preferred method of expression because uh, when I speak, I frequently stutter, forget what I'm going to say, and look like an idiot. And uh, on 23rd of December, 2008, I discovered that my little camera, into which I'm looking now, makes movies, quite accidentally. My daughter-in-law showed me thereafter how to proceed to make a movie. So I've made one test movie since. This is another test movie preparatory to something a little more uh, adventurous. <clears throat> uh, there are three dates uh, in my life, apart from the normal uh, adventures that one would have, a birth, a death of a family, a marriage, or whatever. These were events uh, which or dates which commemorate events which uh, were seminal uh, events in my life which changed the vector of my life forever. Uh, it's 25th of June 1950 when North Korea invaded South Korea. All young American men were invited to take advantage of this opportunity to exercise their freedom of choice. We were told we were free to choose to come to the military voluntarily, or we may choose not to come to the military voluntarily and go to prison. So I went into the military voluntarily. I was a, I was a volunteer RA, and I was sent not to Korea, but to Austria, which uh, uh, was my entry into another dimension. Uh, social and uh, uh, and then this uh, uh, July 4th 1976 was another seminal event when in the course of my employment I was asked to and I actually did evict a woman from a small house and she was occupying for, that was owned by my employer it happened to be on an Indian reservation, and she happened to be an Indian, an American Indian. And that was another event which uh, changed my thinking forever. Uh, the other event, the other significant date was the 4th of July, 2005, when NASA, the National Airspace Administration, uh, blasted a hole in a bypassing comet that didn't belong to them. And I would like to say something about those events in due time. Uh, several days ago I went to the closet and re uh, retrieved the family Bible. That's this thing here. Family Bible. It was presented originally by my great-grandmother to one of her sons, who happened to be my father's uncle. He was the oldest of, of uh, that, uh, that family, the boys in the family. And that was 1886. That, uh, that uncle passed away and it was presented then to one of his younger brothers, my grandfather, by my great-grandmother in 1890. A magnificent poem. It has a complete history of the Bible, uh, from beginning to end, and its development, its translations, and uh, weighs 14 pounds. It's a beautiful thing. However, um, because of uh, uh, some of these seminal events, particularly the, the date, the uh, 4th of July, 1976, which was this nation's bicentennial holiday, uh, and when I carried out a, a duty and evicted an Indian from an Indian reservation, I thought, well, uh, I, can, I, can, 
cannot accept this and remain the same person I was. So, and she was, she was denied certain rights that she was entitled to under the law by men who felt that she was only an Indian. And you know what this country is like when the goddamn Indians had it? It took the white man to come along and develop this country. Don't you forget it? Uh, and I, I eventually was successful in getting some redress for her on that account. It took 13 year, over 13 years, but uh, she, she did receive a, a monetary award on that account. Anyway, uh, this, in fact, Barack Obama will be sworn in as our next president uh, next Tuesday, I believe it is, the 20th of January, four days hence, and he will uh, be sworn in on a Bible. I think it was President Lincoln's Bible. And this country is committed to the Bible. However, I am not. And rather than the Bible, this is a book which I would, if I were general manager of the universe, I would substitute in all territories owned and occupied by the United States of America and administered by the United States of America because this book concerns tribes of people in the Middle East, their adventures, misadventures, and so forth, and their history. And it is the Word of God. It says, it's on, on the front of the This is the Word of God. And uh, I was brought up believing that was the Word of God. And then there were seminal events in my life which uh, introduced me to a, an alternative thought process. Anyway, um, this is 500 Nations, the title, by Alvin M. Josephi Jr., whom I've met several times at his ranch in Oregon. And I would like to, for the record, read into from the, his acknowledgments. This book adheres closely to an eight-hour CBS television film series titled 500 Nations, narrating the history of the Indian nations of North America, and produced by Kevin Costner, Jack Lustig, and Jim Wilson. Uh, in addition, I want to thank the following, Jack Lustig, as well as Kevin Costner and Jim Wilson, for inviting me to write this volume to accompany their television series, and there follows a, a name, a, 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 a paragraph of names to whom he is indebted for their assistance in preparing it. Um, chapter eight. This is the history, an illustrated history of the North American Indians, which concludes thus: Chapter eight. The end of freedom. The end of freedom. And that is glorified in our flag, the flag of the United States of America, with our hand on the Bible. And for my purposes, my, for myself, I choose to place this on top of that. Thank you.